Good day, everyone, especially Sir Norman Torigosa. Good day, sir. By the way, I'm Kristen J. Sisipada from BTL at HA3A. And I am the next reporter, and I am assigned to tackle the lesson pipe, which is the moral virtue is the middle in between vices. So let's start. But first, let us uh, know the objective of this topic, which is uh, at the end of this lesson, you are expected to first discuss what is mesotis, second, distinguish what, what is virtue from vice, and third, define moral virtue. So now let's um, move on and let's start the discussion. So. One needs to develop practical wisdom by exercising the faculty of practical reason in her daily life. In attaining practical wisdom, one might initially make mistakes on how reason is applied to a particular moral choice or actions. But it is precisely in experiences that one is able to sustain practical wisdom for it to help steer someone's ability to know morally right choices and actions. In other words, one is able to mature and grow in her capacity or knowing what to do in living a morally upright life. So for Aristotle, developing a practical wisdom involves learning from experiences. So you must learn from your experiences. And knowledge is not inherit to the person knowing the right thing to do when one is confronted by a choice is not easy so this is why when it comes to life choices one can seek the advice of elders within one's community so it is true that we should seek some advices from the elder people and those who have gained so many life experiences and thus hopefully have developed practical wisdom because chances are they would be able to assist in someone's moral deliberations. Parents, for example, can offer an advice on how to conduct oneself in front of family, members, and relatives. So senior members of the community like priests, counselors, and leaders might be able to guide the young members in how relationships with others are pastored. So perha perhaps... One might understand, like Bro Armin Lewistro's actions of his showing guidelines on television viewing for children during his government stint because he could have observed the possible effect of television violence on the young. He says that whatever good values that are instilled on children are sometimes removed from the consent consciousness of young people because of the Levision violence. As a former secretary of the Department of Education, he possibly has learned so much about the consequence of such situation on the young. Practical wisdom may have guided him from acting in that way. But when practical wisdom guides the conduct of making morally right choices and actions, what does wisdom precisely identify? as the proper and right thing to do. So what does one determine and constitu constitute as the moral way of doing things? So for Aristotle, it is the middle, intermediate, or mesotist. For the Greeks, that is aimed at by a moral, morally virtuous person. So determining the middle becomes the proper tool by which one can arrive at the proper way of doing things. So, Aristotle says that in everything that is continuous and div divisible, it is possible to take more, less, or an equal amount, and that either in terms of the thing itself or relative to us, and the equal is an intermediate between excess and effect. By the intermediate and the object, I mean that which is equidistant from each of the extremes, which is one and the same for all men, by the intermediate re relatively to us, that which is neither two 
much or nor too little. This is not one nor the same for all. For instance, if ten is many and two is few, six is the intermediate. Taken in terms of the object, for it exceeds, exceeds and ex exceeded by an equal amount. This intermediate, according to the arithmetical proportion, but the intermediate relatively to us is not to be taken. So, if ten pounds are too much to eat and too too little, it does not follow that the trainer will order six, six pounds. For it is also perhaps too much for the person who is to take it, or too late, too little, and too little for Milo, a famous Greek athlete. Too much for the beginner and athletic exercises. The same is true for running and wrestling. This a master of any art avoids excess and defect, but seeks the intermediate and chooses this the intermediate not in the object but relatively to us. So for Aristotle, a morally virtuous person is concerned concerned with achieving her appropriate action in a manner that it is neither excessive nor deficient. In other words, words virtue is the middle or, or the intermediary point in between extremes. One has to function in a state that her personality manifests the right amount of feelings, fashions, and ability for a particular, particular act. Generally, for Aristotle, feelings and fashions are new, neutral. For him, so that that is her uh, his uh, point of view, which is mean, which means that in themselves they are neither morally right or nor wrong. When one, for example, shows a feeling of anger or the ability to fe to feel anger, these manifestations are of his personality are not immediately construed as morally wrong acts, but the rightness or wrongness of feelings, passions, and abilities lie in the degree of their applications in a given situation. It is but right for one to get angry. For example, the person has offended her, but it's not right to get angry at everyone. Yes, it's true that if you're angry, you just need to be angry to a specific person not to everyone because she has been offended by someone so one can be excessive in a manner by which she manifests these feelings fashions and abilities but one can also be deficient in the way he or she expresses this one for example might already need to show outrage because of the acts of lawlessness done by terrorist groups and yet show insensitivity because she is not directly affected by these acts. A morally virtuous version targets the mesotis for Aristotle. The task of targeting the mean is always difficult because every situation is different from one another. Thus, the mesotis is constantly moving, depending on the circumstance where one is in. The mean is not the same for all individuals as pointed out by Aristotle. The mean is by no means simply an arithmetical proportion. Therefore, the task of being moral involves seriously looking and understanding a situation and in assessing properly every particular detail relevant to the determination of the mean. One can simply be angry with someone but the degree and state of it depends accordingly with the nature of the person she is angry with. For Aristotle, with the aid of reason, one is able to see how man should show angriness at a child must be different from showing the same feeling to a mature individual. Yes, when you show angry, you should show angry differently from a mature uh, individual um, from a child. So, mesotis is the state of which one knows that the act of light is not excessive or deficient. Therefore, just like any craft, one cannot be good by doing it haphazardly, but instead, reason demands a continuous habituations in the skill needed to perfect the act, targeting the metal and 
entails being immersed in a moral circumstance, understanding the experience, and eventually developing the knowledge of identifying the proper way or the mean to address a particular situation. Going back to the news article on the possible effects of television violence on children, we can see that the government and its line agencies responsible for protecting and assisting the young on their personal development could have acted with a view of the middle measure. The government could have dismissed the issue and simply not acted on it at all since violence sadly is seen as part of life. So, the government could have also taken the other extreme actions of totally taking out on television all possible portrayals of violence. So, Aristotle's discussions ultimately leads to defining what exactly moral virtue is. So, virtue then is a state of character concerned with choice, lying, and a mean. So, the mean relative to us, this being determined by in a rational principles and by that principles by which the man of practical wisdom would determine it. Moral virtue is firstly the condition or right, but by a person who has a character identify out of her habitual exercise of particular actions, one's character is seen as a god in terms of continuous preference for the good. Secondly, in moral virtue, the actions done which normally manifest feelings and fashions are chosen because it is the middle, and the middle does not fall short or excessive of the proper proportion by which these feelings or fashions should be expressed. So by Aristotle adds that the middle is relative to us. So this does not imply that Mesotis totally depends on what the person identifies as the middle. Such as case would signify 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 that Aristotle adheres to relativism, but Aristotle's middle is not relative to the person, but the situations and the circumstance that she is in. This means that in choosing the middle, one is looking at the situation and not at herself and identifying the proper way that the feelings and fashions should be dispensed. And that's end my topic. So the continuation of this topic will be discussed by May Apaap. So once again, I am Kristen J. Zizibada, your beautiful reporter. Thank you everyone and may you enlighten up and thank you for listening my report. God bless everyone.